considered a majestic Loxodonta africanum, better known as the African elephant. Standing more than 10 feet high and weighing an average of 6 tons, the world's largest terrestrial mammal roams the savannas of Africa. In addition to the elephant's immense strength and natural beauty, humans have been captivated with the African elephant's ivory tusks. Historically, ivory has been an excellent material for carving. The smooth, flawless appearance of ivory, along with its versatility, brought it a significant place in the consumer market. From ancient Greece to the Roman Empire to the Renaissance, ivory, as a luxury good, has centuries of rich history. Yet by the late 1900s, the meaning of ivory changed completely amidst a period of two major global concerns. First, the early 20th century fostered an explosion of environmental conservation measures around the world. Second, at the same time, the lucrative ivory trade caused one of the largest genocides of elephants. As a direct result of both events, Ivory's meaning endured a twist away from its previous commodity status to now a morally objectionable product of endangered species. For these reasons, the conservation movement during the late 1900s effectively altered the meaning of ivory and caused the degeneration of the ivory trade. The origins of the conservation movement can be traced back to the mid-1850s when both Europe and the U.S. enacted forestry protection laws that tried to regulate expansion into new territories. Throughout the 1900s, U.S. established national parks and wildlife refuges as conservation became more of a public issue. Many environmental activists, such as John Muir and Gifford Pinchot, worked to pass major conservation projects in the effort to preserve the wilderness. By the beginning of the 1900s, the roots of the movement began to grow, stimulating conservation measures around the world. During this conservation movement, Africa was experiencing a fervor of ivory trade. From the 1890s to the 1980s, the invention of the modern rifle, along with an enormous increase in ivory's global demand, caused a spike in ivory trade. Skilled poachers seeking copious amounts of ivory swept through Africa, exterminating elephants. The total volume of raw ivory exports reached 1,000 tons in 1983. Most ivory was exported to Hong Kong and Japan before entering the European markets as a finished product. As conservation measures made big steps from just protection of forestry to protection of all wildlife, the spur for modern environmental conservation took hold. From the second half of the 20th century alone, 46 legislations in the U.S. were enacted towards protecting the environment, including the Environmental Protection Agency in 1970. But this wasn't just an American movement. Countries around the world began enacting similar legislation for environmental protection. One of the most significant conservation efforts was the creation of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES, in 1975. This global agreement to regulate international trade of endangered species included the support of more than 190 countries. Without a doubt, CITES was an important and influential force dedicated to protecting threatened wildlife through international trade control, and thus has made a direct impact on the ivory trade. The continued explosion of the ivory trade peaked in 1981 to 1990. Within that eight-year span alone, the African elephant population decreased by 50%, from 1.2 million to only 600,000 elephants. However, the simultaneous increase in awareness for wildlife conservation caused this large-scale elephant massacre to face large global opposition. In 1990, sites placed elephants under Appendix 1 category of endangered species, which banned ivory in international trade. This ban on ivory trade lowered worldwide demand for ivory and prices plummeted. Conservation groups around the world publicized anti-ivory campaigns and countries clamped down on ivory markets. Within a short period of time, ivory went from a prized commodity to being associated with the devastating impact of illegal poaching and illegal trade. In this sense, we now see how the conservation movements throughout the late 1900s effectively altered the meaning of ivory and caused the degeneration of the ivory trade. Today, the status of ivory is still changing. The trade ban has helped stabilize the African elephant population to now grow at about 4% a year. It is hard to say where the future of ivory will go. Can there be a balance of ivory trade and elephant stability? How will the meaning of ivory change again as the elephant population returns? Many of these questions are difficult to answer anytime soon. However, it is clear that there is a parallel between the growth of environmental conservation and the change in ivory's meaning. Without a doubt, the conservation movements during the late 1900s 
significantly contributed to the tarnished image of ivory that we know today.